Hi, this is Tamara Rubin, Let's Safe Mama, letsafemama.com, and today we're using home test kits to test things that we know are toxic and know are positive for high levels, unsafe levels of lead um, that we've tested with XRF technology. We're testing them with the home test kit to see if the home test kit works on that type of item and what kind of reactions we get. So this is a soda stream canister. Uh, the top part right here is super high lead. Is, it's brass, or? Yeah, it's leaded brass. It's 31,200. It's a really good example of what leaded brass looks like. And it's also something, you know, that abrades over time. It's meant to screw in. It's meant to pop out. Um, when the company was contacted about that, they said that they don't believe that the soda actually touches the brass. I don't know how that's possible because it seems to me like it must come out there, but maybe I don't know about the mechanics well, of that this. Was that the air? The air? Oh comes, yeah, the comes air through comes through there, and, so and I don't know if the it. pressure of the air is enough to um, spew out lead particulates. But people, people, um, people talk about well, how can a liquid uh, beverage be, you know, um, contaminated with lead? How can a a bottled beverage have a higher lead level than than water? Mm -hmm. And this is one way because even if the air is the only thing that's touching, and if that air is high pressure, which it is, it's very possible that there's micro particulate lead ending up in the beverage using this technology. So um, we're gonna see if this, we know this is high positive for lead using XRF technology. We're gonna shine the light on it to see what kind of reaction you can, we get. Uh, hold this so I can turn it on. I'll hold that, hold on a second. Is it in focus on the item? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah. So Avi is my son and he's filming. So we're shining this, we're not seeing any green. There's some blue, blue fluorescing. I don't know if those specks might look a little bit green uh, it's hard to say. Um, and then we're going to spray this with the reactive agent home test kit. And we're going to give it just a minute and then we're going to shine it. Now, if it turns green, that means that this reactive agent kit works well on leaded brass. Now, in my experience, it doesn't work well, except for this particular example has been abraded from use. So you you can see the lead. Can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. This does test positive. Wait, I'm trying to get it to focus. So, one moment. Uh, wait. It's, it's hard. It's very subtle. Okay, wait. Um, there. And around, do it around. Can you see it all the way around? Mm -hmm. And And again, part of the reason this would be, I think, is because of the abrasion that of this particular thing it's a it's a threaded kind of screw like you know threaded bolt top that goes into the machine to uh have the air go through it and of course again the company says there's no impact on the user in terms of lead but um i don't know that it's been carefully studied down to parts per billion levels as to whether or not soda stream water that has been processed by this machine ends up um, with a higher level of lead than the water that was run through it or not. And at the very least, you're probably touching that when you're assembling it. And yeah. It doesn't say wash your hands after assembly. It doesn't. It? Yeah. Um, so that's a concern. And you can read my article about this. It's a pretty comprehensive article on letsafemama.com. We are asking people to subscribe to the YouTube channel. In the YouTube channel video description, I'm putting the links that go with this video, including the links to the article about this, other uh, links to leaded brass items that are items of concern, and more uh, broader discussions about safer choices and, and testing methodologies and all of that, including this test kit and a um, uh, link to purchase it yourself in case you want to try this out and experiment with the efficacy um, with things you have at home. Now, the main thing, again, the takeaway is we're all learning here at the same time, and some things may test positive, and other things may be positive, but may not test positive because these home test kits do not work on everything. So I've tested quite a few leaded brass things that did not test positive, even though they were very high positive. The next video we're gonna do today, so please tune back in in a second, is we're gonna test this little tiny leaded brass singing bowl. So mm -hmm. stand by for that. And uh, I recall, so th this company does specifically, like th they published that thing with the, uh, with the sponge for braiding brass, but it's not yes. necessarily a good idea. There's, yeah. They, they um, have in their instructions for this test kit that you can use like a magic eraser white sponge to rub on an item to help uh, release the lead. So it's more likely to react 
with the um, light, just the, in the same way um, this is it is more reactive. I don't know if you can see it with the light off. Not really. See, I, I mean light on. So, so the light's on now, and you can't see what you could see with the light off. That's another, you know, issue with these uh, black light tests is that you definitely need the light off for a lot or of... Or stronger black light, I guess. Uh, yeah, know. that's another... I don't know. We should try to get a I was thinking about light. that, yeah. Um, like the ones that they use for uh, forensics. Yep, yep. We should get one. Let's find one mm -hmm. on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, we don't recommend abrading the surface because we don't want to expose our readership to higher levels of lead. Um, and so, I don't think that's actually a great technique to use with this. It's similar to when people were testing paint with the 3M lead check swabs and you cut an X into the paint to test it. I think that's okay with paint if you're using a razor blade and you're planning on doing work on that area anyway, it's going to be disturbed. But for personal items that you're just testing out of curiosity, um, like you look them up on, on leadsafemama.com and you have one similar and you wanna see if it tests positive as well. Um, I just think that doing the abrace, abrasive uh, method to determine if there's lead mm. after you get a false negative or potentially a false negative puts the user at too much risk. I mean, so it, I and it's it. such an obvious inherent issue in that by doing that, you're making the lead more available to the test kit, which means it's also more, more available, available to, to you. you. Yeah. Right, exactly. Okay, so tune back in for more here at letsafemama.com. Thanks for being here.